All right, on this next movie, which is going to be about the horizon down, I wanted to finish off this little shape that we, you and I had started right here. And I want you to see how real simple this little shape can be to finish. Um, and there's a couple of things that I want to clean up, but let's get right to it. Sometimes the little color matching copy isn't close enough for me to get to so I can put a little shape real close to this. So I want you to see how sometimes I put a temporary something here. I'm going to click on the clicky copy image and I'm going to grab this clicky copy image and I'm going to make a little lasso around this clicky copy image right there. Okay. Now I'm going to hit command J which is going to put a real small shape that's only temporary and it's a shape that I'm going to throw away. I'm going to hit the V key and I'm going to move it either down or up and get it out of the way just so I can have something real close to me so I can make sure that I'm painting the right stuff. Now, meaning I, I, you've got to have the vision in front of you of what you're painting. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish off this shape and we're going to get it right. So I'm clicking back to the very first one that I did. Let me turn this off, which was this Horizon Blue number three. And I've made two more layers called Horizon Blue number three dash two and then Horizon Blue number three dash three because it's got two extra shapes in it. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to click on that shape, which I believe is going to be right there. Now I'm going to hit Command H on it because I want to finish off that shape real nice. So let me hit the B key and let's grab this color that's right here and let's just run that color all the way to the edge. Now I am going to gauge and blur it by one or two pixels because it does have, a, it's not a hard, 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 hard shape. And I want to back off on the color right about here on the front part of it just to kill it just a little bit. So I'm just going to come in here and just back off on this color just a little bit. So now I think that shape is pretty good. I haven't put the dark on the back yet, which I'll do as a last shape, okay? Actually, there is another color that I have to put up there. So I'm going to put an extra one there. Let me double click it and let me hit Command V to paste it. Then I'm going to go underscore one. That worked out very well because that's going to be my dark. But let me deselect. Let's leave that shape selected that I'm turning off and on. And let's gauge and blur it by a little bit just to give it a little bit extra um, oomph. 19.3 um, is just a little bit too much. I only want like a two pixel feather on it. So let's go back to a little bit more than that, a little bit more than that. Let me move the gauge and blur window over so we can just get the impact of it. That looks real nice. It's nice and soft on the edge. A little bit more, just a tiny bit more. There, that's good. Now, what I want to do is click up to the next layer, go back to my selection and command click it right here hit command h and then we're going to add this black to black darker tone in the back right there so i'm going to just paint along the back edge of it as you can see now i'm adding that darker tone that's right here okay now i'm clicking up to the next image the next layer i'm sorry the next thing i pathed out was this shape look at how i have pathed out this shape which is that extra light shape in here so i hit the b key let me hit command h let me hit the b key and let's just fill it up with this value option delete now I need to, I filled it up quickly so that I could paint this color back on top of it until my eyes said to stop it. Now let's come in here, let's just paint it a little bit more, paint it a little bit more. Okay, that's looking real nice. Now all we need is a little bit of extra stuff. Now what do I mean by that? Look at how there's a little whitish color on this edge that I have to bring back in. So I make my brush tiny. I grab this white value right there, and now I'm going to paint this white value right along this edge. Look at how now I've got that looking real pretty. It almost looks exactly like it has to look here, and I'm just about done. Now, I have the third shape, so I click up to the third layer, and I command click the third shape. Let me um, hit Command H, hit the B key, Option click this blue, and Option delete, and fill up that shape. Now. I think that's a pretty darn good rendition of that shape, knowing that I could take a layer mask on any one of these shapes and kind of kill the darknesses that I put in there. You see how back here that I'm pointing, see how it's kind of backed off on that color? If I hit Command D to deselect, I do this all the time. 
I'm going to click on the first one and hit a layer mask. Watch this. I'm going to click on the second one, which was the dark tone, and hit a layer mask. I'm going to click on the third one and hit a layer mask. And the fourth one and hit a layer mask. How come? I may need to use them. Now let's go back to the very first layer that I had that tone on. I need to back off on this one. So I click on the layer mask, take the black, look where I'm going to paint, and I'm going to paint black. Whoops, I need to make that into black. Always keep your eye on that. Even though I'm on the layer mask, um, the foreground color turned to gray. Gray isn't going to eliminate very much, so it's up to you to keep your eye on that. Now let me custom fit this. Now let me click up to the second layer mask and now let's diminish this tone on the second layer mask and look at how that is nicely backed off meaning it's lightened up on that tone and if I get back on this um, what do I have right there? I don't know what I have right there. Oh, never mind. I had a, 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 a dot on my screen and it ended up being a bug. Okay, whatever. Let me hit Command S to save the file. Now, remember that little um, shape that I made so that I could have that piece of reference right there? I don't need it anymore, so I'm going to throw it away. Now I'm going to hit Command S to save and let's turn off the color copy and let's turn on the clicky copy and I can see just how close I am on that shape. Knowing I have a layer mask, knowing I can eliminate what I need to eliminate later. But look at how neat that is. I think that's a really simple way to tell you how to paint. Little shapes on higher layers, each one gets a layer mask, gauge and blur when you want to add a feather, and then punch it away on a layer mask. Simple. In that respect, Look at how I'm going to click on the, let me turn on the small color car. Look at how, and I'm going to get close if I turn on the clicky copy, the white that's on the edge for the horizon. I need to gauge and blur that near the horizon. So I am going to do exactly what I told you I should do, and I'm going to gauge and blur it to the most of it. But here's something I need you to see on my layer palette. I'm going to turn off and on that white. I need to find it down here it's right here no I gotta turn this off okay now let me turn off the horizon up white and I want you to hear what I'm gonna say the horizon up white is on a higher layer so if I start painting my horizon down on lower layers and I want to influence a little bit of the tone from this area here up and make, make my brush bigger if I want to feather, you see how there's a little pink edge along this edge? Well, if the white layer is higher than all the horizon down layers, then I'm going to have to make one fix-it layer for the horizon down to actually paint a little bit on this, um, let me say this right, the horizon up layer white is higher than the horizon downs. So any fix-it layer is going to have to be higher than the white layer. There, I said it. Now, let me actually click on the image for the white, make sure no selection is active, go to Filter, Gauge and Blur, and I want to Gauge and Blur the white layer. So let me go up to about five or six pixels, seven pixels, eight, there. Now, um, I, I'm going to try to get close to this so you can see something. Um, let's get close on this edge. Uh, I have the Gaussian Blur layer on, and I want you to see how I've Gaussian Blurred it for this much. I'm going to turn on the clicky copy so you can see that I've just about got that pretty. Now, I have to reduce the amount of gray that's in there. So that's the first thing I'm going to do on my first Horizon Down layer. But what Brian just did was he ruined all of his other white everywhere else. So what I should do is make my brush pretty darn big. Go find that horizon up channel, see, hit the inverse, shift command I, hit command H, and keep it going the same way I've told you before, which was to click on the layer mask for the white layer. I've added a layer mask. Now, if I paint black over on this edge, and I paint black on this edge over here, and then black all the way up here, I'll sharpen those back up to being very clear. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? The only place it was fuzzed was in this area right there. So I've had to fuzz that. Now, let's go do the horizon down. I'm going to command click the horizon down. Whoops, I missed it. Click up to the RGB layer, Brian. Command click the horizon down. Hit command H and let's go to the first horizon down layer. My goal on the first horizon down layer is to lighten up on my top of the horizon down. Look at command H, okay? Now all I have to do is grab this lighter pinky value, come with a brush right here. Am I on the right layer? Yes. So now if I back off on this, look at how pretty that is, and look at how that's looking very much like it should look. Let me go over here. I seem to have a somewhat of a little problem, and I know where the little problem is occurring. There's a little line that's appearing here, and let me show you where that is. It's actually extending beyond the white layer. Let me um, Z back because I have to fix something. I'm going to Z back all the way. The fix it layer that I told you about, I'm going to have to actually um, put that fix it layer above the white layer. I know how to fix this. I just want to show you the right way to do it. Um, the white stuff is here. So I'm going to put a horizon down layer, horizon down white. But I'm putting it above the white layer. It's kind of important to tell you that. And I'm going to hit Command H. What I need to do is to go um, Command click the horizon down layer again. Okay, now I'm going to actually add a little bit of a feather to this edge because I want to actually lighten up but make it real pretty. So what I'm going to do is go to shift um, function shift F6 and add about a three or four pixel feather to that selection right there. Because if I hit command H, you have to see that, that I, I want to lighten up on it but I don't want to get that little overspray tone. So let me get close and see, see if this works. If I click to this tone right there, and I paint along this edge just like this. Okay, now I turn off the clicky copy. I should be able to lighten up on that, and look at how nice that's actually lightening up. And I really, really have to blur that a little bit more. So the more I paint, look at how that's getting so clean on there. It's getting real nice right there. Now let me just keep it going. Um, let me put that right here. Horizon up. Yeah, that should that should be working a little bit better than what it is. I'll tell you why it's not doing that. It's because this isn't high enough. This layer that I'm painting right now, the selection is prohibiting me from going up too high. So when that happens, look at how I want to actually force the color up a little higher. I'm going to go to select modify, expand. And I'm going to expand out this by about five or six pixels. Even more than that. Let me go up to some more. F select, modify, expand by about another five pixels. There. Now I'm going to hit Command H. Now I'm going to paint along this edge and it's going to, it should be letting me now paint that out completely. Let me go with a little bit of white along that edge there. Beautiful. Now let's come up here and let's paint this out a little bit more here. Okay, now that's looking really soft. And in a little while, I'll come back and I'll add a little bit of a red glow on that edge. Now, let me turn on the clicky copy so you can see what I've done. Look at how I'm real close on there. Really pretty. And in a second, I'm going to actually, whoops, I shouldn't have done that. And now let's turn on the clicky copy and do it up here. This is just too bright right there. So let me just run my brush just up and down this just a little bit. And now let's see if I've done enough. Let's back off on the car. Let's go to here and see if I've got a nice feel. Yep. Now, I'm going to turn on the clicky copy and add a little red tint to it. Let's get real close and grab this little red tint right there. Now, let's paint about right there, and I'll just keep on going. Okay, down with a smaller brush, and now let's add this little red tint that I see that's inside of here. Need a little bit more of that tone right there. Oh, there we go. Now I've got it. Now, let's grab that color right here. Okay, that's nice. That red tone is nice. It's got a little bit of a red tint to it. 
Let's come in here and grab that red tint, bigger brush. Okay, now let's come over here and grab a little bit more of that red tint. And now that should look quite nice. Um, almost exactly what it wants to be for the first color values down. Let's grab it a little bit more with a bigger brush. And now let's start painting. Okay, now let's get to some of the extra darks. So I go down to my horizon down number two. And let's now grab some of this value right here. Again, I don't want you looking at... Let me turn on the clicky copy. I only want... I, I'm going to paint this little triangle shape later. We're going to paint this in a few minutes. We're going to paint this in a few minutes. So all I'm doing is I'm trying to get the graduation of tone as it goes down to the bottom. So on horizon down number two, which is way down there, I'm going to grab the darker value. Now, let's turn off the clicky copy. Let's look at our copy up here. Let's make our brush bigger, and let's now paint that darker value down here, and let's paint it all the way across the car here. Okay, now that's getting nice and dark on the bottom. I should go even more dark, but I should do that on an extra layer. Um, you know what? Um, there's something that I... Um, because I expanded out my selection, let me hit Command H. Do you see how by me painting there, I've kind of messed something up? Um, what I should do is go back to my horizon down. I should um, fix this. It's not a hard thing to fix, but I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. I'm going to go and hit Command Keep on hitting Command Z until that's back completely. Option Command Z back right there. Now, what I need to do is hit Command D to deselect. I need to go back to the overall horizon down by making a selection. And what I'm going to do now is just paint the dark stuff by on that same horizon down number two layer. I'm going to paint that same dark value by hitting Command H. And now it's going to look good. And then I'm going to have to feather and um, fog out, um, sorry, gauge and blur out a couple of these layers. Let's put the dark value all the way across the car here. Look at how clean that was. And I could have cleaned that other stuff up on a layer mask. It just it wasn't that hard to do it this way. Let me go up closer. Um, since this is real easy to do, let me grab that value right here smaller brush and now let's paint that value in here and then all we have to do is darken a couple of these little things here okay that's good let's go right under the car just like this and darken that all the way across the car that's nice now what we want to do is lighten up a little bit with this tone right now so i go to the next layer up let's lighten up with a little bit of that tone right through here Okay, that looks good. Now, what we need to do is go to the horizon down number four, and I'm going to paint a couple of these shapes on horizon down number four. What are those shapes? Let's do the triangle first. So let's go up to the triangle on horizon down number four. I think I've called it the first lower dark. Nope, I've got that. I've got this one here. Uh, let me judge and see what my other shapes are. Let's go right there. There it is. So let's paint this shape right there. Let me hit Command H. Let's grab this shape. Let's get closer on it. Um, I'm going to paint with, the, with this on. I'm going to paint with the click uh, on Horizon Down 4 layer with Command H on and with the clicky copy on. So I can actually grab the color and then paint it. And then we have to gauge and blur it to the most of it and layer mask it to the least of it, which it just needs a little bit of gauge and blurring right here on the edge. Now, here is your shape. It wasn't that hard to paint. You can see it right there. There it is. Uh, you know what? That shape actually now needs to go above the white layer. And that's okay. That doesn't bother me. Watch how dark it is when I actually put it up above this horizon down white layer. See how dark it got? Um, that's because I had put some of the feathering above the horizon up white, which was I'm now turning, I'm, I'm clicking to that layer. So here's the horizon up white that I'm turning off and on. 
So I needed to add a little bit of an influence layer on the horizon up white. Now that vent, which was horizon down 4, needed to be above that. Now let's deselect. Let's go bring this closer. So V key, right hand click, put this nice and close right here. Get this bigger on screen. Gaussian blur this and then clean it up. So this number 4 needs a layer mask. I need to go back to find that layer again. It should be my side vent right here. Yes. Now I need to in. Um, I need to Gaussian blur it first, Brian. So click to the image. Go to filter blur Gaussian blur. Let's Gaussian blur it to 8.8. It's way too much. Probably just two or three. No, a little bit more. A little bit more on the bottom. It needs a little bit more on the bottom to about four. Okay, it needed that much right there on the bottom, so let me click OK. Now, let's make our brush smaller. So I hit the B key, make the brush smaller, click on the layer mask, and paint black after I deselect. Paint black on the layer mask. Whoops. Inverse. <laughs> let me hit Command H. Oh, I gotta go make a selection of the shape first, which was right there. Inverse the selection, hit Command H, and now paint black to clean up that edge real clean on the top. So let's go right down the top of that edge, right down here, right down here. Let go of the mouse so it takes, let go of the mouse so it takes. There, I've got that nice and clean all the way on the top and feathered on the bottom. Now, let's do the bottom shape. Again, it's going to have to be put in hard and Gaussian blur it. So now let's find that same shape. Let's go to horizon down. Uh, I need another one. Let's go to horizon down number four. So I put that above horizon down number five. So horizon down number four or five. I should actually call it white shape just so I know. I know that I pathed it out so it should be right there. There it is right there. So let's just lay it in harsh. B key, option key, grab it. Option delete and fill. Command D to deselect, add a layer mask, click over to the image. I should copy it, but I'm not going to. Gaussian blur it, it to the top of it, so 4.7 is not enough. Six, no, let's go way up to here. That's nine, even more. That's just about right, right there. It's just about right. Let's click OK. Go find the shape again, which was my lower door shine right there. Nope. This one, nope. I found it. There it is right there. Inverse it. Uh, hide it. Hit your B key. Paint in black on the layer mask. So let's click to the layer mask. Uh, this turned into white, so I have to make it over to black. Now, this is the only place right there that I want to maintain the feather. So let's now start painting black all the way down on this side. Beautiful. Now let's paint black all across the bottom. Make sure you let go of your mouse a whole bunch of times. There, that's looking good. Let's go here. I'm going to have to clean up that area with a little bit more white paint. And that's going to be, since it's a smaller shape that I have to clean up, there's a couple of things I have to do here to fix this shape. Let me make the brush real small and now make this a little stronger on this side. Remember, I'm painting black on this edge. Let's put black on the top edge right there. Okay, that's good. A little bit farther out. Okay, that's good. Now, all I have to do, since I like this feather and it goes out to a straight thing, I made it a little bit too harsh. So, uh, harsh in black. So, I'm going to hit the X key and I'm going to make my brush bigger and just add a little bit more of that Gaussian Blur back in right there. That's good. Now let's hit the X key and let's make this bottom edge sharper right there. That looks good. I should probably go darker on this, but that's not looking too bad. Now, what I'm going to do is I have three vent pieces. I've named them Vent 1, Vent 2, and Vent 3 but I need to clean up this bottom thing just a little bit. I should add just a little bit more brightness there, so I should do it. Let me go to Horizon Down 5, which is this lighter shape. Let me turn it off and on that we just painted. I need one more layer higher than that. 
I'll name it in a minute, but I'm going to command click the layer, which is right there, and let me hit command H. Let's get close on it. Grab this color and just paint a little bit inside of here to clean that up. Now, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Now, let's go back down to the first vent shape. Let me turn on the clicky copy, and now let's go to the vent shape. It's a unique vent shape. I've drawn it this way, and I've labeled it as Vent 1, Vent 2, and Vent 3. Let me just find where I put them. Here, I'm going to make a selection of the first one. I'm going to make a selection of the second one. I'm now going to make a selection of the inside hole. So do you see how I'm going to work my way from the outer big shape to the inner shape to the inner inner shape? Now let's do that whole thing. I make a selection of this shape. Let's go to the first vent layer. Um, okay, I need this vent really close to me, so I'm going to do what I told you I was going to do before. Because I don't want to turn the clicky copy on and off too much. So I'm going to take the lasso, and I'm going to give myself a nice lasso of this vent shape. Just like this. Am I clicked on the clicky copy? Yes. I hit Command J. Hit the V key and move this over to here. Now let's turn off the clicky copy. Save the file. Okay, go back down to my first vent. Click on to command click on to the first vent. Now I probably don't have the a dark enough value there right now, and I've hit command H. I'm going to take the B key, and if the color doesn't come off good enough, meaning do you see this light color? If it doesn't come off good enough. It's actually not coming off at all good enough. It is a little bit on this side. It means that I need to darken the tone behind it. Do you follow what I'm saying? It isn't the fact that it isn't the fact that this isn't the right color. Look, I'm clicking and I'm painting it. It's the right color. The problem is is the stuff behind it isn't dark enough. So Clear your head. Let me turn off this. Let's find the layer that I'm supposed to be painting on. Watch how I find the layer I'm supposed to be painting on. I deselect. I hit the V key and I right hand click. Look at how it immediately went to the layer that I want. It's the very first layer in the sheet metal folder called HD3. It flipped right to the HD3 layer. Now, if I darken up on that layer by clicking the horizon down selection and hitting Command H, I'll be good to go. I'm not going to hurt this beautiful white shape. So what I'm doing is I'm actually painting way down on the list. I'm painting something that's going to darken that shape. So let's go grab the color that's near it which is this color right here, this nice dark color right there. And now let's paint until we see it. Look at how it's going to reverse, it's going to reverse, it's going to reverse. Aha! Brian now has the right amount of dark. This should have been a lighter value. This should have been a darker value. A second ago, it wasn't. How did I know it wasn't? Because when I painted this, it wasn't. So I needed to hit the V key, right hand click here, have it send me to the correct layer, darken it, now go back and finish my little shapes. Now while I'm at it, I know you all can see something and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. See this darkness that's right where I'm pointing along this edge? I'm going to grab that darkness by going right to here and I'm going to just feather my brush along this edge just to darken that tone See how beautiful I'm making that tone as it gets darker right there? That's exactly what the car is doing. Now let me go even darker on the bottom of the car by just painting that just a little bit darker there all the way down. Now let's go back to our vent. Command S to save. Those are the things that you need to do when you start painting. Let's turn on our little silly thing that we made a paste on. Let me deselect. Let's go back to our vent holes. Here's our vent hole number one right there. Let's make sure we have the right color on the vent hole number one. So I'm going to 
Command click. Let me find my vent holes. There's my first vent hole. Let me hit Command H. Now, I'm going to get close on this tone right there. Now watch how cool this is. And notice how that goes from a whitish tone to a blue tone. I really want you to understand how I'm going to do that. Let me put the white tone up on the top. I'm still painting on the vent number one. I may need an extra layer there. I'm going to, whoops, I'm painting on HD3. Let me see back. Dark, got it. Okay, I need to go down to the vent. I was painting on the wrong layer. You will do that many times. Command Z back, click to your right layer, and continue the painting process. I blame that on you, actually, if you want to know the truth. I should gauge and blur this layer. It's too sharp. If you follow what I'm saying, it's too sharp. It's way too sharp. So I'm going to deselect, leave it selected. I don't even need to, I don't believe I need to um, layer mask it. I just need to feather it to about three or four pixels. The, too much. That's two pixels now. That's good. Okay, good. Now, what I would like to do is paint that deeper purple. So I'm going to put another, I'm going to double click this vent number one and hit command C. Click a new layer. Double click it and hit command V and then underscore purple or blue. I'm just going to call it purple. Now I'm going to make a selection of the vent number one. I'm not going to draw that out. Let me turn on the clicky copy and show you what I'm talking about. I want to shrink this from here to here. How do I do that? What's the fastest way? Select modify, contract. How many pixels is that? About five. And now look at how I have it exactly where I want it. Now I'm going to, four would have been fine too, but I'm going to feather it by about two pixels. So let me go shift, uh, function shift F6 by two pixels. Hit command H, make sure I'm pasted, pasted, painting on the right layer. Grab this purpley color right there, again, right there. Turn off the clicky copy of the car, and now paint. And look at how I'm painting that purple in there. A little bit darker on that purple. Okay, uh, let's go a little bit darker even, right to about... It, is a, it isn't a purple, it's a blue. Why did I call it purple? What did you make me call it purple for? So let's go in here and paint that a little bit more there. That's nice. All the way down here. Okay. Now, all we have to do now is paint a little bit of this gray on this side. So I click to the next layer. Here is the next smallest shape. Um, let me show you on the clicky copy. Here is the next smallest shape. Do you see how this is for the gray on this side? So let's grab the gray that's on this side. This time, I'm going to leave the clicky copy on because it shows me where I have to paint. I'm going to make my brush smaller. I'm going to first paint this color right here. I'm even going to make sure I'm selected on the right layer. Yes. Clicky copy on, and I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint all up and down this whole thing. Okay. Now I've got some good dark value in there. Now I'm going to even get darker with it. So I'm going to go darker on the top to about right there. I'm going to go darker, turn off the clicky copy, and look and see if I hit Command H how I'm starting to get that nice dark value right next to it. And what's it going to need, folks? It's going to need a little bit of a Gaussian blur because it's too harsh right now. It's just about perfect. Now, notice how I didn't care about the black. Why? because the black is a smaller shape. Let's get a little bit of black going on right there, right in that corner, and then a little bit darker value right about there. And then I could always layer mask it, but I think that looks good. Let's deselect, Gaussian blur it. Now this time, I want to Gaussian blur it the same amount that I did the other one. So look at now how I've Gaussian blurred that. Now let's add the final thing, which is vent number three. So you click to vent number three's layer. I made three layers. Actually, it turned out to be four. Let's go to make the black hole, which is right there. You can see it. If I turn on the clicky copy, you can see that that's lining up exactly with the clicky copy. 
let's just fill it with this dark. So option delete and fill it with the dark. Um, to tell you the truth, I know why it happened. That vent number three, I'm going to uh, hit command H. Do you see how it looks like it's lighter on the top? The problem with vent number two and three, in fact, I'm going to move all four of the vent layers. All four of those layers are going to move up way up above HD5. So I'm going to move them up higher, and now I have exactly what I needed to see a while ago. And look at how nice that looks now. I have exactly what I want. The only thing I don't have is this little white thing. So I'm going to make one more layer right here. I'm going to call it Command V to paste and I'm going to call it white. Now I'm going to freehand this shape and I can freehand it where it has to be. I'm going to go back to my vent hole. I want you to, and I'm going to end this movie right now, but I'm going to click back to the outer shape. I just want to explain something to you before I paint. If I freehand this shape with a teensy weensy brush right there, I should be able to just go up and down with white. But I don't want the white to hurt the black. So if, in a minute, I'm going to have to move this to the proper layer. So could I path this out? Yes. Do I have to? No. I'm just going to go up like this and I'm going to paint white all down this little section right here. Let go of my mouse. Let's just go back up. Actually, I'm using an electronic pen. So let's go up like this. Let's now click and go up like that. And now uh, I've been using between a pen and a mouse. Now let's go back and turn off the clicky copy. Now I really need to clean this up on both sides. Okay, so let me hit deselect. Let's add a layer mask to it. On the layer mask, I need to clean up the left and the right side. See how I went a little bit too fat with it right there? So if I take and paint black on the layer mask, I can actually fix this side of it. Look at how that's cool. If I mess up, I can just hit the X key and go backwards. There, I'm now thinning down that white area. Let's get back on it and see how that looks. That doesn't look too bad. I need just a couple more fix-ups. This has to brighten up a little bit on that edge. So I think I'll go back to my um, vent my, my vent number one, command click, vent number one, right there. Now, um, I want to get, I, I don't want to, you to make this crazy, but do you guys see how there's a little whitish line on the edge right there? But what I would like to do is to, um, fix this but not make it take me a long time. If I, if, if I, this is a perfect example of how I paint. I'm making another layer and I'm going to put it up above all the vents. If I shrink this selection by about four pixels or even five pixels, I now, all, oh, that was too much, let me go to four pixels. If I save that selection as vent, then all I have to do to protect myself is move all the way down on the channel palette, command click the original vent, voila, subtract the vent I just made, and now it gives me this little line between everything right there. If I hit command H, all I have to do is grab this light value. Um, I've made a layer number three. It's ready for it. Let me make this white fix. Vent white edge. Okay. Command S to save the file. Bigger paintbrush. I'm done in two seconds. Let's grab this light tone right inside of here. Good. Now watch how neat this is. If I just run this down this edge, Look at how beautiful that is. Look at how clean that was. And look at how easy that was to do. Now if I turn off my little reference copy, look at how nice that whole side looks. All I really need to do is add this light door line. In fact, I'll do that right now because I have a layer for it. I'll put in here, that's not a door line, it's actually um, a, a door edge, but I just want you to see how I'm going to put that in there right, real quick. Door edge. 
I have a door edge line. It, why? Because it gives you an impression of what the whole side would look like finished. Sometimes when you're confused about something, um, right there, I've made that right there. It's perfect. Um, I'm going to hit Command H to turn that off. Take my paintbrush and I'm going to grab a white value right there. And then I'm just going to run this white value right down like this. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. Now, um, actually, uh, I think I think I actually messed up. I need to show you two things. Um, I remembered one thing about it. Yes, I did. I want to get close. Everything's always like really hard. Um, it's actually a dark line with a white line in the middle. Did you understand what I just said? So what I did was I made a selection of the big thing and I shrunk it for the little thing by using select, modify, contract. So I need two layers of a door edge. I'm going to just make door edge one. Let me click another layer, double click it, command V. Number two, let's click down to the first one and let's get real close and grab this dark value right there and now watch what I'm going to do. This is kind of neat. It's just everything is not as simple as you want. It's not hard to do, but let me hit command H. Let me go down here with a big paintbrush and just paint this dark. Okay. And I don't care about that little value that went around the corner there because I'm actually going to need that later. Now let's go in and click up to the higher layer and let's go click to the thinner value which is... Let me see if I did it over here. Door... I think I... Lower door white. There it is. Now I actually shrunk it by going that... Uh, that First selection, I went to select, modify, contract, and I contracted it by two pixels. Look at how much I contracted it by. Can you see how much I contracted that by right there? Now let's go back down. Let's hit Command H. Let's grab this white right there, and let's just run the brush along here. And now I've actually isolated that out, and look at how pretty that looks, and look at how it makes the whole bottom of that car actually sing. And now there is a good impression of the whole side of that car just about finished to, let me turn off the clicky, uh, the little car copy, or let me hit Command D to deselect, click the V key, and move this up a little bit. So we can see how much detail, let me hit Command S to save. Uh, what I'm going to say to you is, each one of those took about three and four layers to establish. I painted this shape by putting it in hard, Gaussian blurring to the most of it, layer masking to the least of it. I painted this shape that I'm pointing at hard, Gaussian blurred it to the most of it, layer masked it to the least of it. Then I actually passed out the vent, P-A-T-H-E-D, passed out the vent by going vent number one. Let me make a selection of it vent number two, vent number three with the black hole, and then I realized that I even needed to have a little white on the edge, so I went to vent number one, I went to select, modify, contract by about three or four pixels, I'll put three in here this time, and now it shrunk it. I saved that selection and it appeared all the way at the bottom. So all I had to do to paint that little light edge was command click the original vent and then subtract the littler vent from it to get the edge right there. And I was totally able to hit command H and paint that. Now, this is a cool way to show you how to paint this vehicle. Let's turn off the little, or not my vehicle, any vehicle. Look at how if I turn on the clicky copy that is looking really dynamic. Is it perfect? No. In some cases my car might even end up looking better than theirs and that's the intention that I have. My colors are cleaner, it's not as fuzzy, um, I haven't accounted for the little fuzzy around the edge of the back but that's to come. All right this is enough for the horizon down. I've done a good job so what I would like you to do is to solve your sheet metal without worrying about 
any of the littler shapes, but as you go, it's not so bad to accomplish a little e edge or a little smaller shape, but keep to the theory. The bigger shapes go on the bottom, the littler shapes go on the, on the higher layers. In my layer palette, look at how nicely I have com um, grouped everything into a sheet metal layer when I do the windows, when I do the tires and the wheels and the mirrors and everything else, they can go on other folders that, that uh, account for the detail. But that's how I'm going to leave you on this one. Let's go on to the next one.